Geometry of eight balls distribution of force. How an eight how eight ball or how the balls that you use in eight ball, once they hit another ball, how will they react if they're going in one direction? So when we first uh, learn about or play pool or the video game, we obviously know that if you hit with your cue stick something that's directly in front of it the ball is going to continue in that direction. Now what if you don't hit the ball directly in front of you and you hit it at an angle, let's say like this. So it's not going to travel in that direction of the arrow. The ball will not end up there. What will happen is you will do what we call a transfer or distribution of force. So the direction that you push your stick and hit your white or cue ball with it's going to travel and continue. But when it hits that spot right here, if I zoom in, it's going to touch something we call a, what we can call a, well, we're going to stop at that point and write and draw a tangent point. So what we learn about tangent points in geometry is that when you find just one point on a circle, there will always be one line that it will be able to rest on. So we can rest a line, like if you imagine a ball on the ground, maybe I should do that on the ground. If you imagine a ball at the ground, if it's completely round and perfectly round, which most balls are not because they're deflated slightly, we have certain pressure we use, there's only going to be one spot this ball touches. We call that the tangency. So it'll be right there. So what we learn about it is that it will always make a perpendicular line with the radius, the middle, or the diameter if we go all the way across. So this is actually how the distribution of force is going to work. It's going to hit a, a point of tangency, and then at that spot it's going to continue forward at 90 degrees. So let me show you what that would look like. And this is really the key to understanding how to hit other balls and make them go in the direction you want and then you there they might those balls that you hit might hit the wall and then you use the first video's geometry in order to predict and understand where it's going to go and again we can really appreciate how good someone who is a professional is that they do this in their head and they can calculate and sort of see the angles so once we hit that spot we're going to use our point of tangency so let me try my best to draw a tangent line because it really has to just touch that one spot. So that's it, more or less. And we can imagine now and uh, predict exactly where the ball is going to go because it's going to go perpendicular or 90 degrees away from that spot. So let me change the color and show you which direction it's going to go. So now that it hit that spot, it's going to go through the center and perpendicular in the direction 90 degrees away from that spot. So I was, you know, at first I could say, well, when you hit it, it goes 90 degrees from that spot, but that wouldn't make sense until you draw that tangent line. So 90 degrees is that corner right there. So when you do hit a ball on, a, on the side and it's not directly hit in the center, it will always make an imaginary tangent line and travel 90 degrees to that. And then that will be exactly the direction or path that it goes. So the distribution of force, what happens is at that spot, the energy that's traveling this way gets transferred this way towards the center of the spot you hit. Hey, I don't know why that's not staying highlighted. But anyway, I hope that makes sense. We could look at one more example if you'd like. might just be the background color so then the highlighting didn't show up. So let me move the ball in a different direction. And I'll take an arrow. We're going to hit this ball here. When we hit that spot, Oops. 
then we hit that spot we need to draw or imagine in your mind a point of tangency so again we can appreciate this isn't really easy to do until you've practiced it for a while and that's what a lot of things are they just take someone teaching us and then practice so that looks like the perfect circle will sit flat as if it were sitting on the ground more or less at that spot and you need to imagine where the middle of the circle is we can hopefully predict that somewhere right here so our line is then going to travel or are the ball is going to travel in this direction And if we looked at the whole pocket, we would see we would barely miss. So I would want to hit it probably a little bit more right here. Then it'll go, no, it'll go too much that way. So maybe like right next to that spot. So if we get to the point of tangency, which will in my class come up in a few weeks, we'll be able to see and understand um, the vocabulary behind it but if you find the point or spot where you're going to hit and make a imaginary line you're then going to go 90 degrees and that will be the path that it travels so I hope this helps explain for at least some of you and you could obviously with the video game it's very easy and quick to play it and try it out to see if you understand it but again we're we're internalizing and understanding angles and balance and even learning to be a better photographer because those are things that we use all the time even when we decorate or when we organize our desk or our closet we we use geometry basic organizing and how things work